guys, it's Kayla and Jen and welcome back to another Meteorology Monday. What are we talking about today? Today we're going to do a very interesting topic and that is we're going to take a look at the NOAA winter weather outlook for 2022-2023. We're actually going to compare that to the Farmer's Almanac on what their prediction was. Now we did a Farmer's Almanac uh, winter weather prediction video not too long ago. Editing Kayla is going to pop it up within the scope of the video here and then what we're going to do is we'll touch upon that later in the video but we're going to talk up front about NOAA's prediction. So NOAA's winter weather prediction is actually done by the Climate Prediction Center which is a division within NOAA. Actually they issue a bunch of Outlook products but we're going to specifically look at the winter weather outlook since winter's right around the corner. Man, it's going by so fast, isn't it? Winter's coming. And they are actually saying something very interesting. Their forecast actually is looking at this predicting a La Nina event for a third winter in a row, which I, I'm not sure if I've heard La Nina lasting for three winters in a row. All right. But we'll have to see about this one. But yeah. it's very interesting that that's what they're predicting is another La Nina event for this winter. Yeah, and we're going to get into the details of La Nina and all that in a little bit, so stick around. But before we get started, make sure you give this video a like if you're liking it along the way and make sure that you subscribe down below so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday. So before we dive in, let's get an understanding of what a La Nina event is. And the definition that we're going to read off here is from the National Ocean Service, which is just like the Climate Prediction Center, the National Ocean Service is another division or part of NOAA. During La Nina events, Trade winds are even stronger than usual, pushing more warm water toward Asia. Off the west coast of the Americas, upwelling increases, bringing cold, nutrient-rich water to the surface. These cold waters in the Pacific push the jet stream northward. This tends to lead to drought in the southern U.S. and heavy rains and flooding in the Pacific Northwest and Canada. During a La Nina year, winter temperatures are warmer than normal in the south and cooler than normal in the north. La Nina can also lead to a more severe hurricane season. In contrast, El Nino conditions affect the weather across the U.S. due to the warmer waters causing the Pacific jet stream to move south of its neutral position. With this shift, areas in the northern U.S. and Canada are drier and warmer than usual. But in the U.S. Gulf Coast and southeast, these periods are wetter than usual and have increased flooding. So based on these climate patterns, let's take a look at what CPC has to say about this coming winter for the United States. Now, CPC actually looks at two general categories, and that is temperature and precipitation. So what they'll do is they'll do a statistical calculation to determine if a region has above average temperatures, near average temperatures, and below average temperatures, and the same thing for precipitation. Above average precipitation, near average precipitation, below average precipitation. From there, they can infer any drought conditions that could occur. Above normal temperatures combined with below normal or below average precipitation, and there you could have some sort of drought situation occurring. They also take a look at whether the drought condition would continue or whether the drought condition will improve. So we'll get to the drought conditions after we talk about temperature and precipitation. So let's dive into the first category, and that is temperature. According to the Climate Prediction Center statistical calculations, there is a higher chance of above average temperatures expected across Hawaii, western Alaska, the central Great Basin, and extending from the southwest eastward through the southern plains in southeastern U.S. and up the eastern seaboard. There is a higher chance of below average temperatures expected across the Alaska Panhandle and Pacific Northwest, eastward across the northern tier of the United States to the western Great Lakes region. Elsewhere, there is an equal chance of above or below average temperatures. So above average days and below average temperature days, how, how, how does this, I mean, how are we figuring this out? Is it going to be every single day is going to be 80 degrees and it's never going to feel like winter and then on the flip side it's going to be snowing and Armageddon and there's going to be no sunshine for the rest of the winter. How, how is this, uh, how's this going to work? That's right. So again, it's a statistical average. So they're looking at forecasting the temperature every day, high and low, and then taking the average and then seeing where it racks up. Is it above average? 
near average, below average. So if you take a look at, say, the state of North Dakota, you notice that it's below average temperatures for this outlook. But does that mean that they are going to be below average every single day? Their temperatures are going to be below average? No, that's not what this means. But over the time period of the outlook, the temperature winds up averaging below normal. And let's take another state, Florida, where it's above average. So again, you're going to have the same thing, just the opposite. Temperatures over the span of the outlook will be above average in terms for, for calculated average, but they will have days where it'll be, you know, a cold front will come through, it'll be cooler than normal, and then it'll warm back up. But over the span of the outlook, it'll average out to be above average. And what is the span of this outlook? The span of the outlook is three months, December, January, and February. So there's the Climate Prediction Center's temperature outlook. Let's take a look at precipitation. There is a higher chance of above average precipitation expected across Hawaii, Western Alaska, the Pacific Northwest, and the Great Lakes region. There is a higher chance of below average precipitation expected across the Southwest, eastward through the Southern Plains and Southern US, and again up the Mid-Atlantic region. Elsewhere, there's about an equal chance of above or below average precipitation. So again, just like with temperatures, with precipitation, we have above average, near average, and below average temperatures. Yep. So let's take a look at the map and we'll take Michigan and Southwest Texas as two examples. So looking at Michigan, it says that they are going to get an above average amount of precipitation. Again, just like with temperatures, we are not looking at every single day. So it's not gonna be snowing every single day or raining or whatever precipitation they're gonna end up getting. Just if you add up all of the precipitation over the three months of the winter, it'll be more than what they're usually expecting for Michigan's average. In contrast, Southwestern Texas is very much below average precipitation expected. So it doesn't mean that it's not going to rain, but there is a much lower chance of snow or rain or winter precipitation happening here than on an average year. I don't think it snows in Texas, but sometimes it does. So. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've seen the outlook for both temperature and precipitation across the United States, let's take a look at their drought forecast. Based on these predictions, the Climate Prediction Center has forecasted where above average temperatures and below average precipitation may occur. The combination of these two factors leads to much drier conditions and can identify areas where drought conditions will develop, continue, or worsen. The CPC's drought outlook indicates drought conditions will continue or worsen across the Southwest, Great Basin, Northern, Central, and Southern Plains, as well as scattered areas across the Deep South and U.S.-Mexico border. Drought conditions will develop across areas of Texas and the Deep South. Where there is above average precipitation, drought conditions may improve or even end. Drought conditions look to improve or end across the Pacific Northwest and scattered areas around the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley regions as well as parts of the Northeast. Elsewhere, drought conditions are not expected to occur. So that's their prediction for temperature and precipitation and drought as of October 2022. They are going to issue another update on November 17th, so we'll see if there's going to be any tweaks to their forecast. Mm, maybe. So how does this compare to the Farmer's Almanac? Well, we just did a full video on this a couple weeks ago about the Farmer's Almanac winter prediction. So if you've already seen that, you already know what's about to happen. If not, here are the highlights. The Farmer's Almanac forecast for the winter 2022-2023 season should be dominated by an active storm track in the eastern half of the country, running from the western Gulf of Mexico to the northeast, across the Virginias, and across interior New York State and New England. As we look at the graphic, the overall weather conditions for this winter predicts the following. The Pacific Northwest will experience brisk temperatures and normal precipitation. The Southwest and Great Basin will experience mild temperatures and drier than normal precipitation. The northern and central plains will be in a hibernation zone with very cold and snowy conditions. Some areas may see record-breaking cold temperatures of minus 40 degrees. The southern plains will be chilly and near normal precipitation. They forecast some accumulating snow, especially in early January. It will be unseasonably cold and snowy across the Great Lakes region, especially in January. The northeast will be very cold with mixed snowy, slushy, and icy conditions, but February will bring milder temperatures that should make winter seem more bearable. The southeast will experience cold temperatures and frequent storms bringing cold rain and slushy conditions, especially during the month of January. February will see temperatures near normal across the region. 
So now that we've got CPC's prediction, we've gone over the Farmer's Almanac prediction again, let's pop up a uh, spiffy chart here that kind of compares everything. And the thing that I noticed was the most blaring obvious to me, especially living here in the southeast, is that one says it's going to be cold and precipitating the entire winter, and the other one says that it is going to be warmer than normal and very, very dry. So... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who's going to be right? Which one is it? Because I'm here for the cold and snow, but... Um... <laughs> so I guess it's going to be interesting, because especially with the Farmer's Almanac, they're predicting an active storm track across uh, western Gulf of Mexico, through the southeast, up across the Virginias, and into the northeast. So, again, depending on where that line is, as we've seen, 50 miles makes a difference. Are you in the snow? Are you in the right. cold rain? You know, and depending on how tight that temperature zone is, uh, it could be 30 degrees on one side and, and just 50 miles down the road it could be 70, 75 degrees. Yep. So uh, it's going to be interesting how this plays out and yep. see, you know, battle between CPC <laughs> and the Farmer's Own Act and who's going to be right on this. But we actually won't really know until we get through December, January, get into parts of fe February and yep. be able to be like, okay, yeah, we got something to look back on and see. And February looks like prediction to be a little bit warmer. Yep. Um, but a lot of talk here about January being cold and snowy for a good part of the country. We'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to do an update video here in February to see how right it was or how wrong it was. That's right. So what do you guys think? So we've got CPC's forecast, we've got the Farmer's Almanac. Do you agree with either one of these? Do you have your own opinion and think it might be something different? Let us know down in the comments below. Yeah, after doing our Farmer's Almanac uh, video, we found that evidently the signs of of checking ripe persimmons and, and, and pigs collecting sticks actually it's a predicting the winter, so we got a ton of cool comments over there saying, yeah, I think this is what it's going to be because this is what I'm seeing in my backyard. So let us know down in the comments. Do you agree with Farmer's Almanac or CPC? So there you have it, CPC's winter 2022-2023 prediction. Again, if you like what you saw, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below so you never miss the next Meteorology Monday and our follow-up video here after the winter. Follow us over on our weather adventures, Facebook and Instagram popping up here, as well as checking out our website and the School of Weather link down below if you're interested in taking some online courses that teach the basics of meteorology without all of the calculus. Until next time, I'm Kayla. And I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the next Meteorology Monday. Also lead to a more <laughs> Golly! <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was really trying to hold it in. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>